Singapore Deputy Prime Minister Heng Swee Keat says the country will take what he calls a more integrated and coordinated approach to transform its economy post-COVID-19. Debating in Parliament on the President's address, he also says the government will adapt its social safety net and keep an open mind to various ideas such as a minimum wage and unemployment insurance. Still, he warns of trade-offs. Brendan Tenoto tells us more. A small and open economy cannot defy the full force of COVID-19, and all it can do is adapt. Mr Heng says one way is to take a more integrated approach. Singapore can build on our tripartite partnership to be a test bed that creates deeper linkages with an expanded list of stakeholders, including our education and research institutions, our community groups and interested partners from around the world. By doing so, we can create good jobs for our people and new opportunities for our entrepreneurs. He adds that the government will redouble its efforts to develop people to the fullest, from cradle to the workplace. It will also look harder for bright spots in the economy, giving more room to industries to try out new ideas quickly. Beyond its shores, he says digital economy agreements are an example of new ways Singapore can continue to be a global vital node, especially in the post-COVID-19 world. Still, he says all economic strategies must serve the interests of Singaporeans. The foreign investments we attract must create meaningful jobs for our people and strengthen our corporate ecosystem. Singaporeans must receive fair consideration at the workplace. We are therefore adapting our manpower policies, including our employment and SPAS policies, to the changing circumstances to ensure that Singaporeans' interests are upheld. But to emerge stronger, we must resist any temptation to turn inwards. We cannot close ourselves to the world or make foreigners unwelcome in our society. Mr Hing explains that this is so Singapore can keep its economy vibrant and competitive. He says that this will make Singapore an attractive place for Singaporeans and others to invest and do business. And in turn, they'll create good jobs and opportunities for all. Mr Hing adds that this also means more can enjoy the fruits of economic growth and social mobility. That's also why the government will evolve help for the self-employed, uplift lower-wage workers and help seniors who want to work do so. But Mr Hing says strengthening the social safety net must also be financially sustainable. Various ideas have been proposed on how we can do this, such as minimum wage, universal basic income and unemployment insurance. The government will keep an open mind to all these ideas. But we must also recognise that there are no magic bullets. Each of these ideas has its merits as well as unintended effects. We have to consider the trade-offs and be clear about what works for our context and our time. Demands on our social safety nets are increasing at a time when our revenue base is growing more slowly and with sharper competition for tax revenues across countries. So I must caution against looking for what may be, appear to be a costless solutions. Somehow, someone else will have to pay for these schemes. There are trade-offs. Mr Heng also warns against spending at the expense of future generations and eroding individual effort. Indeed, a social safety net cannot become a set of shackles. It should not hold down those who started with less. It should not create dependency such that people who get fish for today never learn how to fish for food tomorrow. It should not breed an entitled class who asks, what more can you do for me? But he says a well-designed social safety net protects the vulnerable, invests in human and societal capital, and gives those who fall down the means to bounce back.